Previously on Legit Streetcars, I got my cheap 5.9 liter Jeep running after five years of sitting and for a grand total of maybe 90 bucks. I'll leave that video linked below, but needless to say, I was happy. As expected, the engine didn't run well. Yeah, it's running really bad. Yep, and it's dead. And although the ignition system was functioning properly, I suspected the fuel injectors were clogged, and so... We need to fix this. So if you remember in the last video, I said I was gonna put together a very, very, very inexpensive tool for cleaning fuel injectors, and that is exactly what I've done. So we have a lot to get to in this video. We're gonna try and make this Magnum 5.9 liter V8 run like new, and if it does, we're taking the Jeep on its maiden voyage. And if it drives well, if it shifts well, we're gonna reward this Jeep with brand spanking new tires because these are all pretty much shot and this one is bald. So before we get to any of that, I wanna change the oil. I wanna drain this oil and see what's going on because if you remember in the first video, this was overfilled by like one or two quarts and that can be a little suspect sometimes. Uh, we didn't hear any ticking or knocking noises, but it's been about five years since this thing has ran, so let's just get the old oil out and hope we don't find anything bad. All right, we have cardboard down on the driveway. I've already loosened up the plug. Let's see if I can aim this into the drain. And I must say, I cannot wait to move into my new shop. And if you guys are new, or if you haven't seen my shop reveal video from about a month ago, I bought a new shop. It's called the Legit Street Quarters. And uh, it's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. I made a video, an MTV crib style video that uh, some people thought was funny, others didn't. <laughs> I'll leave it linked down below if you guys wanna see my shop. But uh, yeah, working on my back here in the driveway in the middle of the street, it's getting a little old. And here we go, let's see what we got. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look the best. Uh, this could also have a little bit of fuel depending on if this thing wasn't starting for the previous owner and they just kept cranking and cranking and cranking. Um, so it looked kind of clean on the dipstick. Doesn't look that clean now though. It's a little milky actually. So I'm really glad we're doing this. Yeah, it smells like fuel. There's definitely some fuel in this. That's probably why it was overfilled. I'll have to see if this thing has any coolers that uh, oil can mix with. The coolant looked perfectly clean though. Everything looked good there. It was just a little low. Drain plug looks pretty clean. That's a good sign. Okay, so luckily this does not have an engine oil cooler that is connected to the radiator. It does have a transmission cooler that's built into the radiator. And in some situations on some cars, those coolers can fail. And then you get coolant mixing with your engine oil or your transmission fluid. And we don't have any of that. This thing wasn't really even low at all. It doesn't blow out any smoke uh, from the tailpipe. So I don't suspect any issues there. The oil did have a slight fuel smell to it, and at this point, let's just take a look at our oil cap here. This is the oil cap, and uh, what do we got here? Yeah, I think we just have a case of condensation. This thing's been sitting forever, probably outside, and we took the other valve cover off in the last video, and it looked pretty clean, but uh, yeah, overall, I think we are good to go. There were no knocks or ticking or anything like that, so it's a good thing we're getting some fresh oil in this thing, and because this engine is in such good condition, we're gonna reward the Jeep with the good stuff. And I don't know why I put that back on. We need to take this off. And of course, by good stuff, I mean Amsoil. So some of you guys know that about a year and a half ago, I switched my entire fleet over to Amsoil, including all of my European cars, my 1000 horsepower Turbo Trans Am. I use their high zinc racing oil in that. And everybody swears by this stuff and I'm a huge fan. So I get asked a lot, what kind of oil should I run? So I I've just done all my research. I've read numerous articles, watched many test videos, and Amsoil Synthetic just comes out ahead of everything every time. So I have decided to run this on everything and I am really happy with it. I have been offered free oil and sponsorships from some of the big names multiple times and I've declined them all to buy my own oil. Yes, I buy all of this stuff. I'm not sponsored by Amsoil at all. They don't know me or anything. Um, but a little while ago, a few months ago, I did become an Amsoil dealer so I can get a better price on this. I have like 10 or 11 cars. And because as a dealer, I can offer you guys up to 25% off, which is what I do. So I'll leave a link down below. If you become one of my preferred customers, you're gonna get 25% off of their entire line. So they sell engine oil, transmission fluid, differential fluid, 
liquid, filters for everything. They have fuel additives, glass cleaner. All of their products are super high quality and they ship right to your door. So I do make a small commission off this. It helps with the overhead of running an automotive YouTube channel. So every order from you guys really helps out. But even if you guys don't order anything from Amsoil, if you wanna use whatever you wanna use, let me show you a free resource. This is a total lifesaver. So they have an Amsoil garage. So you can do this for free. I added the 5.9 Jeep and then you can enter your mileage and when you bought it and you can make a log of all of your maintenance and check this out. We go to products and now it'll list all of the proper weights and types of fluid for your specific vehicle. It'll show you all of the part numbers and all of the filters for your vehicle. And instead of scouring the internet for bad information, this will tell you all of the capacities for everything, the cooling system, the differential, the engine oil. It'll give you the torque specs for all of the drain plugs as well. And with this, you can set reminders also and it'll go to your phone or your email and tell you when you're due for your next service. Oh, and it'll tell you the drain interval information too, so you know when to do your service. So this is completely free. You don't have to buy anything from Amsoil to get access to an Amsoil garage. So a really, really nice resource. Now let's go fill up the Jeep with the good stuff. Drink it up, Jeep. Drink it up. I know what you guys are looking at. And it's perfectly fine. There is nothing wrong with the wheel on my daily driver 335i, all right? It's an optical illusion. You wanna know something crazy? I've driven it like this for about a thousand miles, 80, 90 miles an hour, doesn't shake, doesn't do anything. I bought it like this. I have new wheels for the car, I'm just waiting on tires. But uh, yeah, you'd think that would, that would cause an issue, but it, it doesn't. All right, so let's get some stuff out of the way so we can just take out the entire fuel rail. So it's pretty much just the linkage for the throttle. All right, we're leaving that bracket. I think we can sneak this stuff out. There we go. There we go, perfect. Come to me, injectors. All right, just like that, we have our injectors out and I've already removed two of these guys. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a few different methods of cleaning fuel injectors with them all on the rail, with them out on a bench, but check this out. This is the timing chain from my 135,000 mile twin turbo V12 CL65 AMG. And this is a new one. It hasn't stretched at all. It's in perfect condition. So if you guys have been following along the V12 build, don't worry, it's coming back. The cylinder heads just came in this morning. Uh, so we'll be putting the engine back together. Here are the new guides. Here are some clean bolts. I'm still using this guy. The old jewelry tumbler trick to clean up bolts in short order. So anyway, there will be V12 videos coming shortly. Now let's get this stuff out of the way so we can move on to that. All right, folks, strap in for this one. Grab yourself that cold pop, that coffee, that water, whatever you're drinking, whatever you're eating, and let's clean some fuel injectors. And I'll preface this entire thing by saying this is a very cheap and very DIY method. So I fully understand you can take your car to a dealer or a shop and pay them hundreds of dollars to have them clean your fuel injectors. You can buy a tool for $100 or $1,000 to clean your fuel injectors. You can buy new ones, some of them on eBay for less than $100 for the whole set. Although I don't know how much I trust those. So there are many options. I'm gonna show you a few that are practically free. It'll just cost you a few bucks and a little bit of your time. And you'll know if your injectors are working well well, and they will be cleaned and ready to make your 5.9 or whatever vehicle you're working on run smooth as glass. So anyway, let's get into it. This is the cheapo tool that I made. All it is is a piece of fuel hose that I poked a hole into and I ran the little straw from the gum out can right into it with a little bit of super glue. So this is sealed. We're gonna be building pressure in this hose and both ends of the hose are gonna have a Jeep fuel injector. And I clamped one end because they will pop off if you hold that can down for too long. It builds quite a bit of pressure. Uh, so let me show you a couple different methods of cleaning the injector by activating them with a cleaning solution. So many different options in chemicals when cleaning fuel injectors. This stuff from Amsoil works well, but I got this for a friend of mine. I don't wanna crack it open. I am not going to forget about seafoam. I've been using this since I was a kid and it works great. So I already cracked this guy open. So we're gonna use the seafoam. You can also just use some straight up carbon choke cleaner and we're gonna be using some of that, but mostly this can 
just for its pressure. And if you have an air compressor at home, you can use that as well. But again, this is super DIY, so you don't need anything fancy uh, to clean your fuel injectors. So what we're gonna do here is we already have this injector clamped down. We're simply gonna add a little bit of sea foam. Pour it in, might get a little messy, that's okay. All right, and I'm using a box here just to prop up my tool to the level of the carbon choke cleaner. So we're not holding that can as well. Put a little rag here to collect your cleaner. And then I have just built some cheapo alligator clip jumpers. So very easy to do. I think this is probably the most expensive part of the deal, except for the can of carbon choke. It was like two bucks for these alligator clips. And what we're gonna do is clip them on. Doesn't matter which terminal you go to, polarity does not matter. And also guys, use common sense here, okay? Be safe. We're dealing with flammable stuff and electricity, okay? So that's my warning to you guys. And we can use a car's battery, which I do have the Jeep's battery out here, but again, for DIY purposes, we're gonna use just a battery. So we're gonna connect one alligator clip to the positive, and then all you gotta do is tap the negative, and you can hear that fuel injector is activating. Okay, so right now, we are gonna pressurize this tube with a can of carbon choke, and this is filled with our seafoam cleaner. A little goes a long way, guys. And right now we're spraying the cleaner. Every once in a while, you'll just give it another push. And we're cleaning her up right now. We're running seafoam, pressurized seafoam through the injector, cleaning up the seat, cleaning up the needle in there, and getting all the varnish and gunk out. There we go. The fuel system runs at about 50 PSI, so if you're using shop air, don't go crazy. You will blow the injector out. We might even do it in this video because I'm not clamping that end. Whoa, there we go. See? <laughs> you need a clamp on that end if you're going to go wild uh, with the pressure. I usually leave one end without the clamp so I can refill this uh, with the sea foam. But what I typically do is two of these tubes, this is, I don't know, three or four inches long for each injector. So you can activate it by tapping it. Uh, I usually do that about 10 to 15 times and then just let it rip, activate the injector with the nine volt battery and just let it spray out. And that's about it. You're looking at the spray pattern to see if it gets any better. But let me touch on that a little bit as well because not all injectors are made the same. Okay, so in the last video, you guys saw me spraying fuel out of these injectors while they were still connected to the fuel rail and they weren't spraying the best. It was just basically a straight stream. And my criticism of those injectors wasn't entirely fair because these are the really old style injectors that just have one single hole. The original fuel injectors just had one hole like this. A lot of them did. And they basically spray a stream. I mean, it is atomized a little bit and these could be much better, which is what we're gonna do right now. Um, but yeah, these are a single hole fuel injectors as opposed to something like this. This is the fuel injector out of my 05 CL65 AMG. And you can see at this point they have four holes and some injectors nowadays have six holes, eight holes, 10 holes. They got a lot of holes and that just helps with fuel atomization and fuel economy and power and all that good stuff. Um, so you can actually upgrade these Jeep fuel injectors to a four hole fuel injector if you'd like. Uh, but again, we're going budget here. We're just gonna clean these up and let them rock. That's how they designed the engine to run and I'm sure it's gonna run just fine. So let me show you guys the difference though in the spray pattern with a four hole. Well, yeah, these are kind of dirty. 135,000 miles, probably never been cleaned. And they're already getting better. It's tough to get that picturesque spray pattern on the side of the fuel injection can cleaner that claims it's gonna make your injector spray perfectly by running it through the tank. This is why I haven't painted my walls, people. You can spray seafoam right on them and not really care. But you get the idea. We're just gonna run that a few times uh, if it's dribbling out in the beginning, you are looking for it to clean up and just kind of fan out a little bit if you're talking about a four hole. In this case, uh, we're just gonna see a consistent stream out of each one of these, and we're gonna know that we've cleaned out all of the varnish and gunk from the inside, which if these are working electronically, basically restores them to like new. So another good option, if you're gonna remove the entire rail, which I'm doing so I can replace all of these dry rotted injector O-rings, is you can simply leave the injectors in here before you replace those O-rings, 
and you can fill the entire rail with the seafoam or whatever cleaner you'd like. You can just straight up use the carbon choke. That works well also. So you're just gonna fill up the entire rail with seafoam and you just have to angle the rail a little bit every once in a while just to get this stuff all the way down to the other side. So at this point, we're gonna slide the clamp over because it's gonna last us a little while. And you can use a bolt to block this off or a twin turbo V12 fuel injector if you have one laying around. <laughs> now this is all closed off except for our plastic straw. And then you guys remember this from the last video. So this is my little injector tester box. So it's just going to pulsate the injector quickly. So you can buy one of these. They're I think about a hundred bucks. I'll leave a link down below. Uh, or you can just use the nine volt battery and save a ton of money. But this is the way I'm gonna do it because I already have the tool. So I have this at an angle so all the fluid is facing down and we're just gonna connect that. I will give it some pressure. And we're spraying. If I take the yellow rag away, you guys can see this a little better. It's like a little laser stream, so it's not dribbling out. Um, in this case, it's not spraying sideways and all crazy. So I've done this about 10 times. That one looks to be okay. So we'll move on to the next one, swapping it over. We still have plenty of fluid in there, plenty of pressure. I'm trying my hardest to show you a good visual representation of these things being cleaned. And I just had one. This one was dribbling and I wasn't recording and then it sprayed nicely. All right, YouTube School 101, always keep the camera rolling. Of course, of course. All right, last one, last one. Oh, there it is, there it is. See that? It's kind of, it's just a little messy. All right, hang on, let me give it a few more of these. All right, I've done this one probably like 15 times. Yeah. Look at that, even when the pressure gets low, it's nice. All right, so let's take these guys off, replace the seals, and get them back on the Jeep. Okay, so I've replaced both the top and the bottom O-ring on each injector. Very important, this is one of the old ones. You can see it's kind of flat, so this can cause a vacuum leak. This can cause fuel to spray outside of the engine, which is no good. And you guys can spend as much time as you want cleaning the outside of the fuel injector, but what really matters is the inside and new seals. All right, the fuel rail is installed. We have our air intake installed. The battery's back in. I've topped up the coolant since the last video. This is tight. We have brand new oil and a filter. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. We got keys. Let's go see what happens. So this thing's gonna have air in the lines and there's a bunch of seafoam still left. So it's not gonna start pretty right off the bat, but we'll see what happens here. We'll give it a little prime. Another one for good luck. Let's give it another prime. It's probably like a lot of air in that fuel rail. Come on, 5.9, come back to us. There we go. There we go, 5.9, good 5.9. Good 5.9, wow, this is running good. I know the sun is kind of glaring, there we go. Oh yeah, it's just as cold. We're not getting any of that stutter that we were before. It's running really nice. Check out the throttle response. Immediate. All right, let her idle down. Perfect, perfect. This is beautiful, guys. Beautiful, and I think this PCB valve is rattling. It makes noise every once in a while. Okay, yes. No knock, no tick, idling smooth as glass. Oh, this is so nice. <laughs> All right, keep quiet there, PCV. There we go. <laughs> I'll have to clean that valve or get a new one. This is great. Okay, one last time. Just listen to how smooth this engine is. $750 Jeep. We put an $80 starter in it, swapped a relay, cleaned some injectors for about five bucks, changed the oil, and we are golden. Even the battery is still good. I've let it sit here for like four or five days and it fires right up. So with that, let us go on our maiden voyage. Let's hope the Jeep shifts. Let's hope there's no weird drivetrain noise uh, or anything like that. And if 
it runs and drives nicely, we're gonna get some tires. We're gonna give it some love. Crossing my fingers. Okay, so we know from the last video that it will go into reverse and it'll go into drive as well. So that is a good start. We wanna see if this thing shifts. Oh, and then I wanna see if I can clean up the brakes at all because we may have to replace brakes if the rust doesn't come off. Oh, look at that off idle. Just smooth, smooth as glass. Here's our first shift. Perfect, we're in second, it shifted. All right, coming to a stop. Doesn't shake nothing. The alignment is way off though. All right, here's that one to two again. Mint, two to three, perfect. We're in third gear. The steering wheel is way off. That's okay. And there we go, it shifted again. Oh, it's so nice, buttery smooth. And we still have a lot of bad fuel in here, so this thing I guess could run better, although it's pretty much perfect right now. Oh man, this transmission is perfect. I checked the fluid, it looked really nice and clean. The level was correct, so here we go. On a big street. Oh yeah. We are cruising along. Cruising along in my 5.9. <laughs> this is great. So right now, the only thing I'm noticing is the alignment is off, but I don't hear anything. I don't hear any excessive howling from the differentials, the transfer case. This is full-time all-wheel drive. And these things are pretty sweet. It was the last year of this first generation, but we got our heated seats. We can turn off overdrive right there. It'll tell you a bunch of real basic stuff there. These had the Infinity Gold stereo system, which I haven't even tried yet. And we are driving around. Luckily, the fuel mileage on these is about 10. We'll burn through this mix of good gas and bad gas very, very quickly. Oil pressure is perfect. Coolant is staying right in the middle. The alternator is charging. Let's give it a little hole shot. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we still got to get all this fuel out of here. Gosh, these things are not that fast anymore, are they? <laughs> the fastest SUV in the world in 98 and I think 99. Although the Typhoon was much faster and that was the first fastest SUV in the world. Um, but uh, the 5.9 held its own until the ML55 came out and ours, it just won't die, guys. You can't kill these 5.9 ZJ first generation Jeeps or the four liters. Those are even more reliable. Oh man, I could smell these brakes cooking. I have been a little rough on them to try and clean them up. And let's take a look. So these were totally rusted before from sitting. And uh, okay, yeah, they're looking pretty nice. Not bad, not bad at all. I've only driven it maybe five miles, but the pads look pretty much new. It's like they did brakes on it and then just let it sit. Yeah, the inside rotor looks good too. These are gonna clean up. These are gonna clean up. Sorry for the noise, guys. I'm just letting this thing run. And speaking of that, we have a fan that is working, as you guys can probably hear. Yep, this fan is blowing real nice. And let's see, let's look at these pulleys. Nice. Let me know, Jeep guys, 5.9 guys, is the crank seal supposed to be that far out? That looks kind of a little weird to me, but power steering pump is good. Water pump looks new. A little bit of leak here from the trans cooler lines. We might just have to tighten that up or just get a new hose or something or a clamp, no biggie. So obviously the fronts do most of the stopping, but yeah, these rears, they look real nice, guys. These are like brand new. There is no lip at all. These will clean up with a few more miles, so we don't even have to do brakes and there's no pulsation. The rotors aren't warped. <laughs> Everything is good to go, guys. So we are gonna order some tires. I found some tires on Amazon for $350, some real nice tires. So it says I can get these tires in like two or three days. So let's go ahead and order those up and get some new meats on the Jeep. Well, that is the last time I say I'm gonna replace something on the car in the beginning of the video in hopes that it arrives in the mail three days later before the video is supposed to come out because as you probably guessed, the tires never came. So Amazon said they have shipped and then FedEx say they're still pending delivery date, but uh, I don't have them 
And uh, here's a picture of the tires. They look kind of nice. I can't wait to get them, but if you guys want to see them on the Jeep before the next Jeep video, follow me on Instagram and on Facebook at Legit Streetcars. So for now, to make up for no new tires for the Jeep, to reward the Jeep for running and driving so well, we're gonna get rid of the mush. All right, so I'd like to point out that this was not engine oil. Some of you guys had mentioned that it was just grass and dirt in a bag, and because it was closed up and there was moisture, it kind of turned into goo. And I'd have to agree, it's completely dry now that it's out of the bag, so it's definitely, definitely not oil. And I'm not just saying that because it would be bad to throw oil in the garbage. It's really not oil, look at that, no oil, nothing. Don't come after me, OSHA or whoever's in charge of that. Look at this, it's like a big, there we go. Ugh. It's like a poop stain. <laughs> it doesn't smell that bad, it just it smells natural. Okay, get out of there. There we go, no more mush. Well, I think the Jeep appreciates this cleanup more than it would have new tires, and we didn't do a full detail yet, but... In the next video, we will be doing some detailing. We're gonna do a little cosmetic restoration, so I've already ordered both of the bumpers. We're gonna get a new windshield. It's gonna have new tires. I'm gonna clean the inside like crazy. We're gonna sew up the leather seats, and if you guys haven't seen my E55 station wagon restoration video, I'll link it down below, but this is gonna be very similar to that where I bring you guys from start to finish in one video and I complete the entire project. So you guys have seen most of the mechanical already. There'll be a little bit of that sprinkled in that video as well. Um, but by the time we're done, the Jeep will be done. The 5.9 will be as nice as I'm gonna make it, which is gonna be a very, very acceptable driver 5.9 Grand Cherokee Limited. So I hope you guys stay tuned for that. It's gonna be realistically a couple weeks away. I wanna wait till all the parts are in and then I'm gonna knock it all out in like a week and uh, bring you guys a very complete video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know. Give this one a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe if you're new, and most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.